right this day, and this is kind of a fun, upbeat song. You might want to clap a little to this morning. Why don't you stand up with us this morning as we sing together? Go tell it on the mountain. Silent flocks by night Behold throughout the heavens That shone a holy light So go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born The shepherd's feet, the shepherd's feet and tremble when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Down in the lowly manger, a humble Christ was born, and God said our salvation. That blessed Christmas morn To go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born can be seated. I want to know something. How come you don't like that song? I told the story last year. I know, but... You don't, they don't want to hear it again. Yeah, but when you sang it as a little person... It didn't sound like that. It didn't sound like that. <laughs> no, it was worse. I mean, no, you guys did... <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was fine. <laughs> it was good. It was good. It's, a, it's, a, you know, it's got a good theme, a you know, good story to it. I think Pastor Rick does that to aggravate you. I know he does. I know he does. So, all right. Yeah. Hey, it's good to have you today. It's the second Sunday of Advent. And uh, if you were not at the concert last week, we had Sacred Harmony Concert. You really missed it. It was a, it was a lot of fun, a, great music. And also the teens had a great Christmas party um, during that same time. You missed it because he got to sing. 
Didn't well, he? it looked like I was singing, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Were you, were you actually singing or? I'll never tell. Yeah, so it became from a trio to a... Um, it's called a quartet. Quartet, yes. yes. And you did a good job. Guess, guess who told? I don't know. Was it you? It was me. So oh. anyway, but, uh, you know, I mean, I just told him that you probably would like to sing with them if they had an opportunity. And they thought it was a great idea. But just anyway, with the thanks all who came and helped with that evening event. So today, if you came in and you thought you smelled breakfast, that's because you we did. had an and altered. It was excellent. It was. Let's thank the teams yes. and their leaders. During Children's Church today, the kids are going to see a puppet show. So when we call for the kids to come ahead, no adults are allowed to That's go. That's right. Must stay That's in right. Here. You have to put and, up um, with then, me. And then following this, the, um, this service, the Searcher Study School class is having a lunch in the library. Do you want to tell us about what's going on this week? Sure. Tuesday, all church lunch fellowship at the Mellow D. At 12.30. At 12.30 in Park Lane, New Carlisle whatever it is. Uh, Wednesday, 5 to 6, here, community memorial service. Talk to Rick. Pastor Rick. Do you have some information? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, this, this Wednesday, we're actually doing something uh, through Springfield Regional Medical Center, and they're welcoming uh, people from the community who have lost a loved one this past year. It's a little bit similar to what we do on Memorial Day here in our church, but we're going to have electronic candles instead of uh, actual lit ones with fire. Um, but we just want to find a way, not only for our church, but anyone in the community who has lost a loved one this year they are welcome to this service, and we'd love to know in advance. Um, the Springfield Spiritual, the Spiritual Care Department at the hospital, the chaplains, we're the ones that are putting this on. And if you have not been contacted by Springfield Regional Medical Center and you want your loved one to be named and a part of this service on Wednesday, uh, please let me know because I'll, I'll make sure that we have you be a part of it. I know we've had a lot of loss in our church this year and uh, we just want to be a help to that. So please feel free to join us. It won't be a long service, but I hope it will be a meaningful one. Yeah. That's this coming Good. Wednesday right here. Um, next Sunday is the third Sunday of Advent, uh, which is typically the children's Christmas program and it's going to be that again there's practice this coming Saturday from 10 to 11, and that's for the children through first through sixth grade. So um, Missy has that all planned. If you have any questions, talk to her. You want to talk? Have you sent out your Christmas cards? I have not. Okay. You want to tell them how they can send out their Christmas cards? Sure. Yeah, thanks. Bring your cards for the church family. The teens will deliver them to you. Pay postage to the teens, NYC fundraiser and uh, I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Then 2024 tithe envelope boxes are in the foyer. Uh, we haven't forgotten everybody, but we'll, we'll catch up with you. Yeah. If, you. if you don't see your name and you would like one, make sure you call the office. And uh, this is something that's coming up in March. On March 3rd in, at Dayton um, Christian Life Center, I believe, on a Sunday evening at seven o'clock, is Tim Hawkins. He's a Christian comedian. He is wonderful. He's uh, really funny. If you're interested in going, we're going to buy some group tickets. If you're interested in going, uh, make sure you let me know and or just call the office and we'll put you down. Thanks. All right. I should believe we, we have some, a... I was going to say, should we say something about March 10th as well at our church? Sure. Uh, how many of you know Jason Gray, the singer? All right. Jason Gray. March 10th, mark your calendar because he's going to be here with us in concert, mm -hmm. okay? So uh, it's going to be a free concert that we're offering to the community, but we will need you to go online and, and uh, in advance and reserve a ticket because we're capping it at 300 people. He usually does arena-type shows, but he's graciously coming to be with us at our church, so we're excited about it. Yeah. So we'll get you more details as they come out in the coming days. Looking forward to that. Put it on your calendar. Uh, we have a video like to watch at this time, kind of get us ready for today's theme.
Amen. What a beautiful invitation as we come this morning. Did any part of that stand out to you today as you read through it? So many wonderful things in that passage from Luke today. I was, uh, my mind went to the God who feeds the hungry from his abundance. Isn't that a beautiful thought this morning? Well, this morning we are grateful to be able to come and worship Emmanuel, God with us. And we're going to let you stay seated uh, through this next song as we begin it anyway, because we're going to be lighting our Advent candles this morning. We're on the second week of Advent, and Advent is a time where we are waiting, and we are longing, and we are watching for the King to come into this world. So we are going to sing songs of Advent today, angels from the realms of glory. Let's worship together today. From the realms of glory, bring your flight over all the earth. He who sang creation's story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. In the fields abiding, watching for your flocks by night. God with man is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the Worthy of all our praises, 
Well, good morning. Some of us have been here already six hours. Thank you for those that have came early and those of you that came to our breakfast. The teens so enjoy uh, the serving aspect of things. I always remind them of Mark 10, 45, where Jesus didn't come to serve, um, come, come to serve, not to be served. So uh, the kids, uh, the teens truly appreciate it. And thank you again for those that were there this morning. And there are uh, several on our prayer list uh, that I'd like to highlight. And again, if you'd like to be on, uh, get the email with all the information on it from our prayer list, uh, all you need to do is just get with the office and they'll get you set up on an email and they'll get it uh, on a weekly basis with all the other highlights that we put out each week as well. Our dear sister, Becca Boldman, uh, just needs our um, prayers. Um, she's come down with an illness. We just need to be with her at this time. Tony Denisi has been released from Miami Valley Hospital. Uh, Pat Fry is doing much better and was able to make it this morning. We're glad to see her this morning. Bryce Reams, I believe, has had his last chemotherapy and uh, spoken with Ron. And uh, see, Bryce seems to be okay, doing well, but he still needs our prayers. Then there's that long list that we have at the end of our prayer list with those recovering, going through other treatments and doctor's visits. And we definitely do not want to forget the lost at this time of the year. Uh, as we were talking in Sunday school this morning with the children, um, they learned uh, the age of 13, which most of the teens are, at least some several at that age right now, is when Jesus started to really learn and started to learn. He wasn't uh, reminding the kids, it's, it's that time. Are you, are you pursuing God? Are you wanting to learn about him and hear about him? So as we go to prayer time, if you would please stand for me, if you're able, and the prayer altars are open if you'd like to come forward as we go to prayer time. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for this morning you've given to us. We thank you for this time. Uh, we give you all the honor and glory as we know we're here to glorify you in everything that we do and say and everything about our lives. Father, we just thank you for those that were able to come this morning and give it their time to help out with the breakfast. And we thank you for those that uh, came to enjoy the breakfast as well. And Father, we just ask that you be with those folks on our prayer list right now, for there are many that are sick, they're recovering, they're healing uh, from uh, physical wounds, spiritual wounds. Father, we just pray that you be with them at this time and we lift them up to you. We ask for forgiveness of our sins, Fathers. We know there are many uh, for those sins that we know that we have committed for those sins that uh, we're unaware of, that we may have offended someone or where we should have done something when we didn't. And Father, I just ask again that you be with those, particularly on the prayer list right now that are recovering, uh, still in the hospital, just getting home from the hospital. We just thank you again for your son, Jesus, who you've sent to die on the cross for each and every one of us. Pray that you be with the remainder of this service, Pastor Keith's message, and just be with the worship team as they... Uh, Close out this morning, and Father, we just thank you again for your Son, Jesus, who you sent to die on the cross for each and every one of us. With all these things we pray in your heavenly name, and all of God's children said, Amen. You may be seated. Our ushers are prepared. Let's continue to worship this morning as we receive our morning offering. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give you praise today. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do, all that you are. We ask your blessing upon these gifts. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. We'll ask the kids to come forward at this time. And just another reminder, Saturday is just for the older elementary, first through sixth grade. We're going to meet at um, uh, Saturday morning. It should only take us about an hour, so just make sure that we're ready for next Sunday. And we'll have stuff even for the younger ones, but that will all be next Sunday. Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for 
this exciting time of the year, and um, I know that the kids have a lot going on, and they have a lot of things that they are responsible for, and I just pray that you would help them during this time, that they would um, just be able to take time to not only do the things that they need to do, um, but take time to reflect about what this uh, season is about. Thank you for these children. Thank you for um, the excitement that they show us, um, and may we be reminded once again um, of your birth and just the importance of that. Thank you for this day and may it be blessed by you. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Wonderful children right here. your baby boy will save our sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy has come to make you this child that you deliver will soon deliver you Mary did you that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod when you kiss? your little baby you've kissed the face of god mary did you know
I think we ought to thank uh, Dina and Rick again this morning for that beautiful song. What are you afraid of today? Plenty of things to be afraid of. I heard something. I don't know what it's... Absolutely. I'm glad you're here today. And that person next to you, do we know her? Yeah, it's okay. You can, yeah, it's okay. I've always said the South will rise again, and she keeps coming back, so. Well, last week we talked about fear versus hope. Fear can steal your hope, can threaten your hope, can take it away. But we found that God in his word makes it clear that hope is forward future. He, uh, he says, I will, I will strengthen you. I will be with you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Uh, fear is a big deal. Uh, that we uh, deal with a lot these days. And I don't know about you, do we have any news watchers? Any news watchers? Go ahead and admit it. Stop it. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Well, only kidding a little bit. The word for fear is the word phobos in the original language from which we get our word phobia. So let me share with you some uh, phobias that are popular uh, in our lifetime. Uh, ophidiophobia is the fear of snakes. It's okay, Gary, it'll be okay. We, do we have any others that are with Gary Baker? They're afraid of snakes. Oh, Gary, you're not alone, buddy. Antia, listen to this one, Antia, Antia de phobia, fear of ducks watching you. Now, if you always watching, if you uh, if you hang around our reservoir, it's not ducks, it's geese. Fear of geese watching you. Don't make eye contact with them. And then there's a keltorophobia, fear of hens or chickens. I think I have that one. Then there's ambulophobia, fear of walking. Anybody afraid of walking? Uh, how about this one? Anthophobia, fear of flowers. Yeah, it's a thing. And then this one I'm sure our daughter Ashley has had in the past, but I don't think she can have it now. It's mysophobia, fear of germs. Well, Ashley declared she could not have children because of the bodily fluids. Guess what? Amelia had her first cold last week. <laughs> Sorry, Ashley. You'll have to get over it. So today we're going to deal with the first of the three fear knots in the story that sets the scene for the nativity. So let's look at this one. It's found in Luke chapter 1, verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. 
So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God, no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. So today's message, uh, not a whole lot different from last week's message. They're all going to be a little bit similar. Last week was fear versus hope. This week is fear versus peace. Fear versus peace. How to experience peace versus life's fears. Fear can threaten your peace. Have you noticed that? It can threaten your peace. Now, fear not are two little words found in many languages. I was hoping to see some of our Haitian folks here this morning because I've been practicing Haitian Creole. Uh, the word fear not is pape, pape. Uh, in Spanish, it's no temais or no temais. In German, it's kane angst. In Old Testament Hebrew, it's yare all. And of course, in New Testament Greek, as I've already told you, it's phobos or phobia. God gives Mary a bunch of reasons not to fear. I think we need those this morning, don't you? Plenty of reasons not to fear. First of all, because God said so. Uh, you ever use that phrase with anybody? Anybody ever use that phrase with you? When we were, uh, when we were just young and uh, hadn't had children yet, and we heard people tell their children, because I said so, we always declared that we would never do that with our children. Well, guess what? Never say never. You're right. Never say never. Because God said so. But this is God we're talking about. All three fear nots, God speaks through angels. Probably the same angel, the angel Gabriel, one of the top dog angels in the angelology. God speaks through Gabriel. There's another fear not also in this passage or in this book of Luke earlier on than the passage we just read. And it's Gabriel telling a man by the name of Zechariah that he's going to be a father, which is quite funny because his son's going to be John the Baptist, of course. But it's kind of funny because as it says in Luke chapter 1, Zechariah asked the angel, how can can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. Actually, I'm living with an old hag and there's no way. <laughs> Just translating for you. But look at the angel's response. I like this. Greg pulling this out to the men the other week. This is great. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. In other words, who do you think you're talking to? Gabriel. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this news. Well, guess what? Zechariah was shut down from talking for the next nine months because he has actually had the audacity to question Gabriel, God's servant and his angel. Zechariah expresses his doubts. This isn't an ordinary angel. This is Gabriel, God speaking through his angel. Apparently, the appearance of angels can cause great fear. Anybody seen an angel? Don't look at the one next to you. They're probably not. The record states that Zechariah, if you read that story earlier in the book of Luke, Zechariah was gripped with fear when Gabriel showed up. In fact, in the Old Testament, way back in the older part of the book, in the Old Testament, the book of Daniel, the same Gabriel shows up. And Daniel is so mortified by him, he falls to his knees in terror, and uh, he's very afraid. And then, of course, we find here Mary is greatly troubled at his presence and his words and this greeting that he's telling her about. She is troubled. The word means stirred, agitated, and uh, sudden panic, stress, anxiety. Have you ever had any of those? Fear. 
Yet God says in His Word to all of us when we're in those conditions, do they have fear in Alabama? Do they? Okay, I just wondered. I don't know. I don't know, Smith. It was lucky, wasn't it? Yeah. Inside, sort of outside joke. Alabama beat Georgia and it was accidental, wasn't it? This isn't a participatory exercise here. <laughs> you see, these, these are rhetorical questions, which mean there is no answer that you should bring. Because God said so. In fact, in Luke 1, 37, it says, No word from God will ever fail. Ever. Now we can't say that. We can't say never. But God's word will never fail. Nothing is impossible with God. Last week we learned through Isaiah the prophet, God said, I will. He means what he says. This should motivate both hope that we looked at last week as well as peace that we're looking at this week. Accept his peace and do not fear. God says so. All right, we're asking the question, why not fear? Well, maybe it's because we're his favorite. Did you know you're God's favorite? How many of you know you're God's favorite? How many have trouble believing that you could be God's favorite? The angel tells Mary she is highly favored. It's the same word, though, used for the word Grace. Guess what grace means? You didn't deserve it. Guess what? Mary was a human being just like us, a sinner just like us, needing a Savior, and just so happens that she was about to bring the Savior into the world. She did have a special uh, task. She had a special mission. Uh, there's no doubt about that, but she was still a regular person just like us. God had been watching her daily living, her sincere worship, her prayer life, and she was open to His grace in her life, just like any of us can be. In fact, I think Mary was probably familiar with the psalm, Psalm 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does He withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Mary found favor with God for a special assignment, but so can we. You know that popular passage in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. For it is by grace you have been saved uh, through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Grace is defined as unmerited favor, undeserved, but, but because of his great love, he bestows it upon us. Have you received God's unmerited favor? Do you know personally God's grace today, or you just hear about it and know other people that have accepted it? Oh, we need to, we need to experience it for ourselves. We're asking the question, why not fear? Well, it's because of the convincing divine explanation. Mary's question is pretty reasonable, I think, don't you? How can this be since I am a virgin? Hello? That'd be kind of tough, wouldn't it? But the angel answers with convincing proof. Verse 35 again, the angel says, The Spirit, the Holy Spirit will come on you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Then he uses another proof, verse 36. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive, remember she's the old hag that couldn't have a baby? She is six months pregnant. Proof. She must have been, Mary must have been familiar with the Holy Spirit and His power. He's the one who would uh, process this conception. Cousin Elizabeth is pregnant at an impossible age. God's convincing proof. Now, it would be foolish for me to tell you that God always explains Himself. 
God doesn't always explain Himself at the time we think He should. Think about it. He told Abraham, leave your home and start walking and I'll let you know when you've arrived at the place that I've planned for you. Those things happen. But God always makes sure that we know when we get there. Let me say it again. He doesn't always explain himself at the time you think he should. But he does eventually let us know by uh, the witness of his Holy Spirit. So a couple weeks ago, we uh, celebrated uh, the fact that we have been here 20 years. Pamela and I have been here 20 years. I don't know how you've put up with us. I don't know how you put up with her. I just, it's... It amazes me that, uh, that that happens. Welcome to my world. But 20 years ago, uh, there was a district superintendent, he's now in heaven, who told me that there was a church in Springfield, Ohio, that is probably going to be open. So we started going through the process. Well... Those of you who may have been on the church board at that time would know that you called someone and 30 days later they decided, nope, this wasn't for them. Now, I don't know if it was some of you were ugly or whatever, but that he turned you down. That's all I know. I was having lunch with that same district superintendent later. I'd already dismissed this. It was, it was out, of the, out of the picture, out of the question. We were sitting there at lunch one day, and uh, just kind of out of nowhere, he said, oh, by the way, don't write off Springfield first. And I said, what? He said, yeah. He said, they're still available. And here we are 20 years later, whether you like it or not. What I'm saying is, God, I didn't... I wasn't fishing for applause. It, I have fished for it before, but I didn't this time. Okay. Um, what I'm saying is, God doesn't always explain himself at the time you think he ought to explain himself, but eventually he makes it clear, doesn't he? And that's exactly what happened for Mary. He proved his plan in her life. Accept his peace and do not fear. Well, we have to look at Mary's response, don't we? Verse 38, it amazes me. It always amazes me when I read this. Keep in mind, she's in conversation with Gabriel the angel, all right? In verse 38, after hearing what he had to say, after hearing about how God has worked this thing out, she says, may your word to me be fulfilled. Wow. Wow. Many people believe that Mary was probably a young teenager. I don't know about you, but I think we've got one of the best teen groups and have had one of the best teen groups for years in this church. That's okay, yeah. Now, Reagan, I don't know what you'd do if Gabriel came to you with this story. But she was, uh, she was responding in faith. She believed him. Mary must have come to peace about this announcement, even during the discussion with the angel. Why do I say that? Because it says that the angel doesn't leave until she has settled the issue and said, may it be to me as you have said. Then the angel leaves. Wow. Evidence of settled peace. As the video portrayed earlier, then there's this beautiful song that Mary shares about the glory of God. In fact, in Luke chapter 1, verse 46, just a taste of it again. My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Instead of fear, Mary accepted God's word to her and experienced his peace. Wouldn't you like to experience his peace? It's amazing how fear can threaten peace. Last week we saw that fear can distract hope, and this year, this week we're learning that fear can threaten that peace. Peace versus fear. 
Well, there's another phobia I want to tell you about. Cheniophobia. Cheniophobia is an intense fear of snow. Anybody here have that? People with cheniophobia have an extreme reaction to snow or wintry weather. Even the thought of a light snowfall can cause severe anxiety. No wonder my daughter tells me who lives in Tennessee that if they even think it's going to snow, they shut down the whole world. The word cheniophobia comes from the Greek word for snow, cheone. So uh, a few years ago, during our annual Christmas visit to Tennessee and Pigeon Forge, it was one of those years where they had some of that weather. It was icy. It was snowing. And I remember that we were sitting in the first Jeep we ever owned at a stoplight, and there was a car in front of us that when the light turned green would not move. And I thought, well, maybe they've stalled. I don't know what the problem is. And then I looked at their license plate. Florida. It was obvious to me that this was a whole new ball game to them, and they were scared to death, and they were not going to move. So we decided to go around them, and we learned for the first time what four-wheel drive can do as we climbed right up that mountain as if it wasn't there. We decided then that we were always going to have an all-wheel or a four-wheel drive uh, in the driveway. What fears do you have today that threaten your peace? Fear of losing a job? Or not finding a job, fear of a loved one dying, fear of a child not turning out well, fear that your sin is too dark to be forgiven, fear from world events or even nuclear war, fear of taking care of elderly parents, fear of economy issues, fear in relationship issues, fear of the IRS, <laughs> fear of not being able to learn the language of a new country, fear of not passing final exams, fear of bad weather, fear of the unknown, fears you didn't know you had until the pastor just mentioned them. I want to share with you the, this final verse that says it all. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests. Fill it in, your fears to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the way I'd like to close this morning. I'd like to ask you to stand. They're going to come and they're going to begin singing our final song. And I just have to believe that in a crowd this size, we need to bring some fears before the Lord and lay them at His feet and say, Lord, I want to exchange this fear, whatever it is, whatever it is. You don't have to tell anybody but the Lord Whatever the fear is today, and I'm sure my list wasn't exhaustive at all, but bring your fears to the Lord this morning. We'll have a closing prayer, and we're going to ask the Lord to help us exchange our fear for His peace. Won't you come as we sing, and we're going to have a good closing prayer, giving up our fears. your God has done.
done this for a while. I'd like for you just to hold out your hands like this, palms up. I want you to think about, imagine those fears, whatever they may be, are laying there in your hands. We're going to exchange those fears for his peace. So I'd like for you to take this and turn it over. Now what happens? It falls. It falls on his shoulders. That's the plan. That's what he wants us to do. He doesn't intend for us to hold on to those fears. Yeah, you're going to be fearful once in a while, but don't camp there. He wants you to give them to him. Let's pray. Jesus, we exchange those fears today. We exchange them, Lord. You know what they are. You know what bothers us. You know what brings anxiety. You know what causes us to be awake at night. You know all about it. But you also know that we don't need to fear because you said so. And you have a plan for us. You're not through with us or we wouldn't be standing here, sitting here, kneeling here today. You've given us breath to breathe. And so, Lord, we pray that you would take our fears we exchange them for your peace that, that transcends all understanding. It doesn't even make sense that we could have peace in the midst of whatever this fear is. But only because of what you can do in our lives. We, we give you praise today. And we thank you. And we receive your peace. I receive your peace. Could we say that together? I receive your peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.
And all God's people said, amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. God bless you. You're dismissed.